Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the Bible study portion of RT Ministries and we'll get back into Psalms and we're on Psalms 22. Psalms 22. And this psalm, David spoke when he was in trouble but it goes back to Jesus Christ because Jesus said these same words on the cross. So it's a kind of a double meaning because well, you'll see when we start that Jesus said a lot on the cross and God foretold it through Psalms 22. It pictures Christ on the cross. So, Psalms 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, who said that? Jesus Christ himself said that. And again, I think a lot of people forget what Jesus... When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was asking the Lord if this cup would pass from him. He was fearful. He was, you know, he was fear. What was Jesus fearful of? He was not fearful of being nailed to the cross. He was fearful of the punishment of God. What was going to happen to him? And, you know, when Jesus hung on that cross and he said these words, my God, my God, didn't, he didn't call him father, father. He said, my God, my God, because there was a separation when, when Jesus, when God was pouring out his wrath on him. And Jesus became sin for us. Him who knew no sin became sin. When he became sin and the wrath was being poured out, there was not a there was not a relationship there anymore. That's why he said, my God, my God. Then he said, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was forsaken in that moment. The Trinity, who's been together for eternity, Jesus was forsaken in them of us. He didn't know where he was. He was wondering why God forsook him. Because Jesus himself never sinned. But he became sin for our behalf. And in these moments of being punished, he was wondering why God forsaken him. Listen, the worst thing anybody can happen in this world is they reject Jesus Christ and are forsaken by God for eternity. You know, nobody now on this earth knows what it's like to be forsaken by God. Because even the worst person in this world who's living on the earth today in 2020, is not forsaken by God yet. God's grace, his natural grace, you know, even the worst of the people on this earth still have families. They still get treated well. They still enjoy the nice day. They still enjoy the sunshine. They still enjoy things. God's natural Common grace is what most theologians call it. It's common, but they're not forsaken. Again, when God casts somebody into hell, he, they are forsaken of him. He forsakes them. When you forsake somebody, you let them go. You have nothing to do with them. If God forsakes you, he never bothers with you again. Cast you into hell, you will not get his love. You'll never get his help. You'll never get his comfort. You'll never get anything because you're forsaken of him. Jesus Christ was forsaken for a short time. Three hours, right? He was forsaken for a short time when sin was being punished, but restored after that. Anybody dies without Jesus Christ, they will not never be restored. They will be forsaken for eternity. If Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you, you're in a lot of trouble. So make sure you're saved. You never want to be forsaken by God. So the first song says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And now David was saying this, but it really had a double meaning of Jesus Christ said the same thing on the cross. And he said, why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? And if you've ever been in trouble, if you've been badly persecuted in this world, uh, all continents, Christians, there's some Christians can say, can say this. Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning, right? From my... You groan and groan and groan, and what happens? You usually just hear silence. You know, sometimes you wonder, you know, where is God? What's he doing? You know, when when you're at your worst, sometimes God seems like he's just silent. But then he fills you with his presence. He does other things. But sometimes you wonder, you know, God, where are you? I hear you. Haven't you heard my groaning? And God hears all your groaning out there. If you're being severely persecuted or going through a severe time, you God, remember God understands and he knows. Jesus Christ went through a lot of bad times too. He understands and he knows and he hears you. He knows what's going on. Uh, verse 2. Psalm 22, verse 2. 
Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, I find no rest. Okay, David was in a lot of trouble. He was crying, by, crying to God all day. And at night, he couldn't even find rest for his soul or himself. He couldn't sleep very well because he was being <laughs> pursued by armies, by his son, by Saul. He was being produced by a lot of, or being, pers you know, let's say persecuted. But was, people, the people that were after him were trying to kill him. Pursued by people constantly. So you can find no rest. And listen, Christian, if you can't find rest out there, you're going to have to trust. You're going to have to bank on what you know about the Lord. Sometimes you just got to rest on the goodness of God, whether situations are good or not. Because Jesus said what? He promised. He didn't promise you. He did not promise you prosperity like some of the charlatans out there and all the false teachers out there promise you. He promised you persecution. He promised you tribulation, right? He said, in this world, you will have tribulation, right? That's a promise. But he said, take heart because he's already overcome the world. That's where you got to remember. Listen, if you got bad trouble in this world right now, look forward. You have something better coming. Because you'll be rewarded for what you're going through now. Three, yet you are holy. And this is David. You know, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, I cried to you day and night. I can't find rest, but then he's my, this is where the Christian, you know, if, if you don't think God hears you, which we understand and David knew that he did because he, he got back to reality here. Yet you are holy. Listen, God's holy whether your prayers are being answered the way you want them answered or not, right? God is good. He's always good. He's always faithful. He's always loving. He's always the same. We're the ones who change. But look at part of David and how he got through all this is remembered. When he's when you're starting to dwell on God not answering and God being silent, start remembering who he is, right? Yet you are holy. And then here's the second part of three. Enthroned on the praises, enthroned on the praises of Israel. You know, Who's, in, who's enthroned? David remembered God's holy and he's enthroned, meaning he's in control of all of the promises to Israel and all the other promises uh, in the Bible, in the New Testament, old to Israel and to the Gentiles. God is the God who's in control of all his promises. He promised a lot of things. He promised to never leave you, nor forsake you. He promised to save you, right? He promised all this stuff. And David's remembering this. You're holy and you always keep your promise. You are enthroned. You're in control. And you have made promises that you will keep. Because sometimes in this world you have so much tribulation it doesn't feel good at all. There's nothing good, good about this world a lot of days. Remember who's holy. Remember who's in control. Four. In you our fathers trusted. David's remembering his ancestors, Israel. They trusted and you delivered them. Look, at he's remembering this past. You know, a lot of the feast and remembrances that Israel, like the Passover and all that stuff, was celebrated to remember what God did for them. And David was remembering that the the Lord made promises and the Lord has kept all his promises and has delivered Israel like he promised he would. And listen, Israel is going to be delivered in the near future too. God is, God is not done with Israel. Israel <laughs> Israel has a place. The church is almost done. The rapture, once the church gets out of here, then Israel will, be, will do... They will be evangelizing. They will be doing a lot of other things. But their time is coming when their eyes will be open, like all the Gentiles that God chose to save. Five, and he's remembered now again, his ancestor. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Listen, you won't be put to shame if you trust the Lord. No matter if your world's falling apart, no matter if people are dying around you, no matter if you're going to die, if you put your hope and trust in the Lord, you will not be put to shame. Because even if people, right? Jesus said, don't fear man. The worst man can do is take your life. That's the worst thing they can do. But after that, You'll enter into glory. So that's not the worst thing done. If, if somebody kills me, that's not the worst thing. All they're doing is getting me to heaven quicker. Plus we're with the reward. 
That's the worst they can do. They trusted in you or not, but say, listen, if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, on that day when you die, you won't be put to shame because you will enter heaven. God is worthy of being trusted. Very much so. So he looked to God and he comes back. Six, but I am a worm and not a man. Scorned by mankind and despised by the people. Now, gee, now David felt like this, that he's not even a man. He was scorned by someone who didn't feel like a man. And despised by all the people that he came in contact with. But Jesus could have said the same thing, right? When he's hanging there on the cross, half beat and whipped to death. People were scorning him then too. They scorned him before and they were scorning him there. And he, in this fit, I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind, despised by the people. The people, the people, there were people following Christ superficially and then they all left. He was arrested, crucified, beat, and everybody despised him then. You know, people, listen, people are short, are fickle. One day they're your best friend and friends with you. The next day, they, people turn on you. So don't put your hope in people. You will, listen, you will be disappointed. But you put your faith and trust in God, he'll never disappoint you. Seven, all who, all who see me mock me. And they make mouths at me. They wag their heads. So they're mocking, leaving on the cross. Jesus said to, Jesus was spit on, beat, whipped, kicked, beat with rods, punched. And then all, after all that, he hangs on the cross, feels it. Feels like a worm, and then all who see him, they're still mocking him. They're making their mouths at me. They're wagging their heads. They're taunting him, and they're just shaking their heads at him. Listen, don't worry about what the world thinks of you. The people that shake their heads and mock you, they will get their just ends. Everybody will get their just ends. And listen, the more you become like Christ, the more you get treated like Christ. The more sanctified you are, the more Christ is formed in you. Like Paul said, you know, he had labor pains until Christ was formed in people. When, when Christ is formed in you, you're going to be treated. The more you look like Christ, the more you're going to be treated like him. So it's a good thing. If persecution is rising, if you want to live a godly life, the Bible says you will be persecuted. If you are being persecuted, then... then Glory to you. Keep go keep, keep you're doing everything right. Keep going. And this is what other people said to Jesus on the cross, and David was saying this too. Eight. He the people mock him. What? How'd they mock him? He trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. He's saying, Look, there's people that mock David because of his trust in the Lord, and people mock Jesus Christ, for, you know. They knew his whole ministry that he trusted in God, the Father. He did what he wanted to do. And they said, well, if God loves him so much and he trusts in the Lord, let the Lord, let God come down and deliver him. Now, these are people that neither love God nor Christ. So let him rest him, for he delights in him. And there was just a mocking of everything Jesus said. And by the way, if you're trying to tell somebody the gospel and they're mocking you, stop. Let it be between them and the Lord and move away. Don't let the... the Glorious gospel will be run through the mud. If people are mocking you, they're not listening anymore. So, again, we don't do saving, we do telling. Nine. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. What does that mean? It just means that David trusted the Lord from a young age. Remember Goliath? David was a young, young man, a real young boy. He was really young. You know, God chooses people. And God chooses, the Bible says you were chosen before the foundation of the world. But David followed the Lord a lot of years. 10. On you was I cast from my birth. And from mother's womb you have been my God. See? On you was I cast from my birth. That means you were destined to be with God. And all everybody who was elected, chosen, whatever word you want to use. From my mother's room, you have been my God. You know, God chose you. If you were chosen before the foundation of the world, then we all come to the Lord at different times. We were all chosen. So you were destined from the womb to be saved. Isn't that amazing that God could choose you before the world was even in place? The Trinity got together and spoke about your name and chose you and wrote you in a book. It's amazing. 
Here's David now, 11. Be not far from me. We all have felt that. If you're a true Christian, you've felt that because there's times God seems so far away. For trouble is near. And certainly when trouble gets near, we, we like to feel and know God's presence. It's all, not all the times we feel it. And there's none to help. Okay? Sometimes, sometimes, you know, the Lord might put you in a position where there's absolutely no, listen, if you are one of these, if you are going through trouble right now and there's absolutely no human that has helped you or can help you, and you've tried, you've tried to go to friends, you've tried to go to pastors, you've tried to go to other Christians, not, nothing is working. This is what you need to do. Turn to the Lord and say, be not far from me for trouble is near. You need to trust Christ and him alone. If God's got you in that position, that means you're trusting in other things. You need to trust in him and him alone. Come Focus on Jesus Christ and his promises, his work on the cross. Focus on him. Put your, cast all your troubles and your fears on him and he'll sustain you. That's what the Bible says. 12, many bulls encompassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan around me. I mean, many evil people were around him. And the cross was full of evil people around him. There's a lot of evil bulls out there, so to speak. There's a lot of evil people that want that hate Christ, hate you because you love Christ, hate everything that is about God. There's a lot of bulls. Even though the bulls encompass you, or even all the, the wicked people around you try to get the best of you, even if they are surrounding you and putting you to death, you still put your hope in Christ. 13, they open wide their mouths at me like a... Ravening and roaring lion, meaning they mock him. They keep their mouth open and mock at him. And if you've been with Jesus Christ any length of time, you know people mock you. Whether it's your own family, relatives, friends, work co coworkers, people mock. And they do. One of these days, all the mouths will be shut and every knee will bow. But in this world, you have tribulation, and that's promised. Here's David now. Now, this is Jesus Christ. Um, this is spoken, speaking of Jesus Christ on the cross, too. This would, 14, I'm going to pour out like water. All my bones are out of joint. When you're crucified, your bones pull out of joint. You hang there, and they get all pulled out of joint. My heart is like wax. And certainly, Jesus, by then, his heart would be like wax. It's melted within my breast. He's losing strength. My strength is dried up like a pot, potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaw. You lay me in the dust of death. Jesus was close to, when he was, we all know when you haven't drank water and you're, you're really thirsty, your tongue starts to stick on the inside of your mouth. He was not in good shape on the cross. My strength is dried up. My tongue is sick to my jaw. You lay me in the dust of death, meaning he was close to dying physically. For dogs and company and the company of evil lures encircle me. And here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here. They have pierced my hands and my feet, and that's crucifixion. And Mark, listen, mark my words, in 16 where it says they pierced my hands and feet. At this time in history, crucifixion hasn't even been thought of yet. Nobody has brought it up. Nobody has invented it yet. Listen, God knows what he's doing. He wrote the whole book. He knows when things are going to happen before they happen. You can put your faith in something like that. God holds the only universe together. He holds everything and moves everything. He doesn't just sit there and allow things to happen. He sits there and controls all things. He just controls all things, you know. I'll leave you with this thought. What's the opposite of up? Down, right? What's the opposite of right? Left, right? What's the opposite of God? Now, if you said the devil, you're wrong. The devil is not the opposite of God. There's no opposite of God. The devil isn't even in his category. There's no opposite of God. He's the sovereign God. There's no opposite to him. It's not him and the devil fighting it out. There is no opposite of God. He is a 100% full control of all elements, all people. Everybody on earth is doing the will of God all the time. Now, how, why God... Will a certain thing to happen and wills other thing not to happen? I don't know. Nobody knows why all things happen. Only God can answer that question. Nobody on earth can. But I do know 
that God knows the hairs of your head, right? Numbers the hairs of your head. He knows when every robin, every bird falls. Because why does he know when they fall? Because he's the one who kills them. And God has laid out all your days. God has numbered everybody's days on earth. Everybody's going to die when God willed them to die. So you can't extend your life on this earth any farther past God has willed it. So this is why we say, Lord, if your will, your will be done, right? What can we learn about Psalm 22 already? David started out in trouble. Why have you forsaken me, Lord? Never remembered how holy God was. And God used this through David's pen to write all the stuff about crucifixion that was coming. And most of the psalm fits Jesus Christ, too. Listen, if many bulls are encompassing you, if you're dying, if you're in a hospital bed dying, rejoice. You're, saying you're going to see your Savior face to face soon. Listen, this, this Psalm 22 tells me, it reminds me that you're going to have tribulation. Jesus came down, had tribulation. David had tribulation. Paul had tribulation. Everybody in history has tribulation. If you want to live a godly life, you will be persecuted. Tribulation and the certain, even if everything's going good for you, hang on. Given enough time, you're going to have tribulation. This world is full of sin and it's full of bad times, good times. Whatever it is, remember that God's holy and he's on his throne. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.